people that are still behind, you know, left behind, are used to. How hard is that adjustment going to be to what you're going to try to teach them? Uh, it's a great question, and and you know, and over my career, I've changed a lot. You know, Colorado's my ninth state. Very excited to be here. Very excited to get to work with you guys and have this opportunity. I think this place can be really special. I mean, you look at at what Fort Collins is all about, and I already love you know my time that I've spent here. And you look at what this university is about, and the people that want to get behind this university. That makes it a special place already, and we haven't even taken the field yet. So, um, it, you know, I'm really excited to get to work with these young men and the guys that are coming back. Um, to answer your question. I think the beauty of this offense is it's simple and it's built through repetition. So it's not necessarily where the, one of those things where you look at the guys that were here and say, hey, you know, we can't work with these guys. That's not it at all. You know, there's a lot of guys on this football team that, uh, that can do what we want them to do. And it's, and it's going to be built through the repetition that we create every day in practice. Kind of going off what you were just said, obviously this offense was built different, differently under Adazio, but. Are there returning guys you see that really come to mind that could really fit your air raid offense? Maybe a guy like Dante Wright? Yeah, Don, Dante's a guy that we've obviously isolated right away just from watching film over the last couple of weeks. You know, probably a slot receiver for us. You know, will be more of a true slot. Won't be lined up as tight as he was, you know, in, in the offense that he's played in the last two years. He's, you know, the thing is he's a guy that's got experience. So that's huge. And you can build off experience, you know put him out in the slot and let him move around and try and put him in positions to be successful is, is what our job is, you know, and I, and I think he'll take to it. You know, and the thing that I've loved so far being here is, is these guys have been energetic. They've been coming and pounding on the doors and saying, coach, you know, when can we start learning? You know, when can you start teaching the offense? So it, it, it's always easier when you got guys doing that rather than the flip side, kind of like when we first got to Nevada, everybody's like, oh, what's the air raid? You know, what is this? You know, we don't know if we want to do this. You know, we weren't brought here to do this. So, um, you know, the one thing I'll say about it is a lot of fun for, for these young men. And so, you know, with their energy, it, it's going to be fun to get to work. Kevin Lytle with the Fort Collins Colorado Insights. How do you, to fans, like how, how do you describe what the air raid offense is? Obviously, that's a name everyone hears a lot, but, you know, kind of your simple breakdown for fans, how do you describe that? Explosive, fun to watch. You know, I, I knew, you know, my dad started this offense in the, in the early 80s. You know, a lot of our concepts come from what Lavelle Edwards and those guys did at BYU for a long time. You know, it's, you know, my dad always says, hey, you know, I, I didn't create all this. I just packaged it like I did. And that's where the air raid came into effect. A lot of this stuff was West Coast concepts that we just shrank the verbiage down and, and put it into a, a simplistic system and, and went out and played fast. And so that's kind of how it's, you know, it's taken off over the last, you know, 25, 35, 40 years, you know. Um, so it's going to be exciting to, to get, it, get it put in. You know, I think the thing Jay and I have done together since we've been together for the last five years is, is we've taken the players that we recruit and we find and we cater to them and see what, what's going to make them successful. And so the run game's kind of changed, even, even changed a lot over the time that we were at Nevada, you know, from where we started with Ty Ganji to where we graduated with Carson Strong. You know, Ganji was more of your runner, dual threat quarterback, and Carson Strong was your true pocket passer, you know, great accuracy, throwing it down the field. So. We'll, you know, we'll look at David Bailey. We'll look at, you know, Ajon and those guys and see how they fit. And, and let's see how we can put them in a position to be successful. Yeah, so it was kind of ironic. So when my father and I were at New Mexico State and we played in the old WAC in Nevada and all those teams were in there and we had to go up against Coach Alt and we hated it. You know, we hated hearing about the pistol offense probably as much as they hated hearing about the air raid. Um, after I set, years later after I separated away from my father, I found the advantage of using the pistol in our offense. And so I did it for four years at LaGrange College as a head coach and really loved it. 
and fell in love with it. So when Jay called me to go to Nevada, it was like, oh my gosh, this is like a dream come true. Now I can go, you know, I've learned air raid from my dad. Now I get to go learn pistol from, from the guy, from Coach Alt. And so Jay and I kind of sat down and said, okay, how do we really marry this thing up and, and make it into what we want it to be and so-called pack attack? And so it, it really had a lot of usefulness not only for, for our players, but you know our downhill running game and, and how we wanted to, to, to run the ball really is what it, what it accounted more to and, and to the guys that we had. So, you know, of course, we're going to use it here. We're going to continue to use it. I think it's hard for defenses to pick up on our protections and, and where we want to run the ball, and that's what makes it so, so tough to deal with. How fast do you like to play? Um, you, you know, Playing fast is dependent on a couple of things. You know, playing fast is dependent on how fast your O line can get lined up, and, and and get the play. You know, get their you know their protections called and stuff like that. So, you know, it's one of those things where we'll see how spring goes. I mean, we'll probably be pretty pretty slow and chaotic at first, as as anything. Um, but as we move along and as our quarterbacks get reps in it, you know, I think we'll be able to pick the, pick up the speed. You know, play. Playing fast is tough on defenses because now you limit them to a little bit more of their base and what they truly want to be, you know, and not giving them so much time to, to really hone in on who you are as an offense. Eddie Hurd is the third quarter here. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention no, that. That's all right. Um, you added Clay Mellon, a couple of talented quarterbacks, two as freshmen. Just is Clay Mellon kind of the guy, or do you think there'll be a competition at quarterback there throughout camp? You know, we had a we had a great meeting yesterday. I met with all the quarterbacks together and kind of went over my expectations and and where the offense is going to go. It, you know, I was very blessed. It took us three years to really get that room right over at Nevada, and, and at the end of it, you know, I had seven quarterbacks in there, which was a little bit heavy for a quarterback room, but all those guys pulled for each other, and and so we started out the meeting yesterday like that. You know, hey, I want you guys to be competitors. I want you to, you know, fight each other and go out there and try and be the best guy on the field. But at the same time, I want you to love each other and, and pull for each other and, and work together. So I think we got a good group. And, and Clay knows what I expect. And so that's going to help carry over to the other guys. But Clay knows he's not going to be given the job. You know, I mean, Clay's got the upper hand right now because Clay's had the reps in it and he's played in some games for us and he knows knows the system. So he will have that advantage going into the spring. But we're, we're definitely going to mix up the reps and, and make sure we, we come out with the best guy. How hard is it for Justin Mike with the NBR? How big of an advantage is that for you guys as a staff, just in terms of being able to hit the ground running, not having to explain you know, every little nuance of the offense to the quarterback? Well, it's huge. And I think, you know, Jay alluded to it a little bit because, I mean, we've got other guys coming, Torrey Horton, you know, Melquan Stovall, who are guys that have a lot of receptions in this conference and in game time. So, those guys are going to get leaned on just because they've played a lot more than what Clay has in any of the younger guys, or even the guys that are here, right, Giles and, and Evan, who are going to get some opportunities. But, you know, I think, it, you know, it's big. It's, it's different than when we went to Nevada, right? We had to start over from scratch. Here, we've got some guys that can come in. And I think with the energy of the guys that are already here at Colorado State, I think they're willing to learn from those guys. And so it'll be fun to put them together. Not really. You know, people ask this question all the time. And, you know, and, and the thing that I'd say is, you, you know, as coaches, what Coach Norvell puts us out there to do is to go recruit the best guys for our system, right, and then that fit our identity. And, and so we go out and we build these relationships with these young men and we build these relationships with their families. So, you know, to sit there and say they're necessarily, you know, honed in on, on the colors of the school or what the school is, they're really more attached to the coach that's coaching them and the – the identity that they were brought in for, right? I mean, they all have an understanding like, hey, this was going to be air raid. You know, this was going to be something where we're going to throw the ball around a lot. And so I think it was natural for them to quickly say, you know, hey, this is, this is what we want to do. I mean, it wasn't a deal where we coerced anybody. I mean, it was just they wanted to follow the offense. And so, you know, I think it's, it's more so to do, to do with that than anything else. It, you know, it's not bad. I mean, it's really not bad for any of them. I think 
you, you know, and Jay talked about it too, the three things that we look for in a quarterback. And number one, the first thing I do when I walk into a high school looking for a quarterback is I go to the counselors and I say, can I please see his transcript? And if he's over a 3.3 or he's, he's a pretty successful student in the classroom, then I know that we're going to have the ability to shoulder him with the offense. And that's the beauty of this offense is we allow the quarterback a lot of freedom to change plays and get us into the right play. You know, I always tell everybody the best offense coordinator on the field is your quarterback. You know, if he has the ability to diagnose defenses and understand what he's seeing and change the play and make it right, that's tough for a defense. You know, they're hardly ever going to be right, you know. And, you know, and I look back at the last week when we played you guys and Carson, I mean, Carson called half that game. You know, I mean, he was out there, you know, changing plays and getting us into the right place and was really successful at it, you know, in his junior season. So, you know, are we going to be that in the spring? Are we going to be that this fall? Probably not. But, you know, I think what Jay and I have created with our quarterbacks and our offense is, is kind of that roadmap of success on, on how we've developed a quarterback and gotten him into a position where he can have a lot of success. So, I mean, to really answer your question, it's not that, bad, it's not that hard to learn. It's just all the nuances and understanding what you're going to see. So how far along is play? And then how far do you hope, because you're going to bring in two freshmen in the spring, how far along can they be by the time you get your summer camp going? Well, Clay's a year in. So, I mean, he, you know, he's had, and, and fortunately, the way we work on, on offense and in practice, you know, he, he's had a lot of reps. You know, he, he's gotten a lot of opportunities to take the field and, and execute it. So, you know, Clay's got a, a huge upper hand going against these younger guys and the guys that are here, right? So, and, and, he'll, and he'll build off that. But I think, you know, the thing about the offense is, you know, it's a three-day install. So, we're, we're, the whole offense is installed in three practices. And my dad built that in the 80s based off of spring practice, which is 15 practices. So, you know, you do the math, you get to go through the rotation five times, you know, and that's, that's a big deal for, for young guys. When they're getting those reps, they, they're going to get pretty successful at it pretty quick. You, you know, I love the way that, that Jay presents himself to a team and, the, and then his core values. You, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in his core values and respect, accountability, and hustle. And, 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 you know, Jay and I just had a lot of fun. You know, I, I grew up Air Raid. I mean, I was born in Texas. You know, I was running this stuff when I was in the fourth grade. You know, so when Jay brought me in to interview for the job, I was like, Coach, I'm going to be honest, I don't know a lot else. You know, triple option, no, don't know any of that. You know, I'm not, I, and, and nor do I even want to do it. Never, I never really understood why you, you know, as a quarterback, you'd want to take one step back, run down the line of scrimmage at a defensive end, make him really mad, and then pitch it, you know? So, um, I mean, I get it. And my hat's off to Air Force and, 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 and what they do. Those guys are, you know, really good at what they do, and they're tough to play. But that, you know, as a quarterback, that's just not what I wanted to do. So, I grew up Air Raid, you know, and, and and grew up under my father. And then getting with Jay, it's it's been a lot of fun because he's a West Coast guy, a lot of West Coast concepts, and especially in the run game. And so we've bounced a lot of ideas off each other over the last five years. And, and some of them have worked and some of them haven't. But, you know, I think we've gotten to a point where we're pretty successful on offense. We kind of know what we're doing. Was there any awkwardness stepping into the locker room when the team that you guys just beat 52 to 10? <laughs> you know, it's uh, I remember walking on the field for that game, and I'm like, you know, you, and we came here and played Bobo too, you know, in year one, and man, what what an impressive place. I mean, just an amazing, you know. So it's it was kind of surreal to to walk out, play that game, win that game, leave, and then a couple weeks later, you're walking into the stadium wearing green. Um, it, you know, it's I'm just so excited to get to work. I'm very blessed at the opportunity. You know, I love working for Jay. I love working with these guys on staff. I mean. Shoot, Timmy Chang, you know, wealth of experience as a quarterback. So, you know, usually if I'm seeing things a different way, it's fun to go talk to Timmy about it. Um, you know, Chad Savage is, a, you know, going to do our tight ends. He was a Reno guy, but really young, bright mind. Um, James Finley, who I've not worked with, who's coming in from L.A., but brings, you know, a big recruiting piece for us in L.A. and, and has been a guy that's just really excited about getting started and learning the air raid. And then, 
and then Bill Best at, at, um, at the, you know, at O-line, who I've known for a long time, never had the opportunity to coach with until Nevada, and he does a really good job with those guys up front. So, it, you know, I think for everybody here, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, and, and what we want to score a lot of points. We want to play fast, you know, quarterbacks need to throw touchdowns. So that's what we're going to work and strive to be. Well, Carson was such, and I get emotional, Carson was such a special kid, nobody wanted him. You know, he, he was the misfit, right? Nobody, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, what does he fit? He can't, he can't run out of sight in two days, you know? So, I mean, like, who, who's he going to be? And like Coach said, you know, number one was his passion and his heart for the game. I mean, you had to kick the kid out of the office. I mean, he wanted to learn. You know, I tell everybody the story that when he first got on campus, he was a mid-year, so he came in in January, so he's like, these three guys are doing for us here. Nobody wanted to play catch with Carson, so Carson would take a, a dummy out to the football field, set the dummy up, take five, a ball bag, five balls, and throw balls at a dummy. Four years later, everybody in the world wants to catch a ball from Carson Strong. You know, so Carson's passion is unbelievable, his work ethic. Um, and the thing about the quarterback room is we're, there's not, there's not going to be any secrets. Our quarterbacks are going to understand what we want out of them, you know, off the field, on the field, their presence. And they're going to understand what our goals and, and, and where we want to get this program to. And I think it's important to be honest with these young men. And if they understand that, you have less problems, you know. And so this group of guys I have to work with already here, I'm extremely excited about. I mean, they're all, you know, energetic. They're all very talented. They're all a little bit different. You know, Clay, Clay Millen was one of the top passers in the state of Washington coming out of high school. I mean, he had Colorado, he had Arizona, he had Indiana, he had a lot of power five schools, and we were able to flip him away from that with the offense. Um, you look at some of these younger guys, Braden Fowler, and Jackson Stratton, both kind of different players. Braden's more your can kind of run around, hurt you with his feet, really good arm. The kid has a 10 3 8 hand, which is absolutely unheard of to me. Carson's hand's like 9 and 3 8 close to 10. But um, Braden had one of the highest QBR ratings in the state of Texas. I think it's one of the highest QBR ratings in the, in, in the nation. Jackson Stratton, you know, again, kind of a Carson Strong looking kid. Really tall, 6'4 and a half, 205 already. Great arm, great mechanics, really smart young man. So, it, you know, we got some guys to to work with, and it, it's going to be fun once we get started. Thank you. Thanks, guys.